Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is Bang Bang Ray Hill. Um, and I'll just talk about my friend, uh, Ronnie Bender, from Chelmsford Prison, and uh, a nice, nice guy. And uh, just like to say a few words about him. Yeah, um, Ronnie Bender was my pal, yeah. Ronnie Bender was a nice, nice geezer. Uh, I didn't meet him until, what, um, 70, what, when I got in Chelmsford, what, 74, 75? I got in Chelmsford Prison. No, later than that, that was happens, because uh, I remember being in 76, in uh, Albany, and when there was aggravation and trouble, I got nothing anyway. Yeah, um, Ronnie Bender was a nice, nice guy, mate. I mean, I, when, I, when I went to Chelmsford Prison, um, after a couple of few days, um, I bumped into him in the toilet. I said, hello, mate, uh, my name's Ray Hill. He said, my name's Ronnie Bender. I went, oh, hold up. <laughs> well, I just heard, of, I heard about Ronnie Bender, you know what I mean? Because you do over the years about the craze and bits and pieces. And I'll tell you what, he took me to his cell, he said, how long have you been? I said, I've been here about a couple of three days. He said, look, hold on a minute. And he, he opened a drawer of a cupboard and uh, he had all tobacco in it and, and, and cakes and biscuits and all sorts of things, tins of this, tins of that. And, uh, and he opened another cupboard and he had all bottles of, <laughs> bottles of drink in there and everything, you know what I mean? The guy was a well-respected man, a nice, nice guy. And uh, he gave me some cakes, he gave me some biscuits he gave me sugar, he gave me milk, he gave me tea bags, he gave me coffee, he gave me chocolate. He said, anything you want, mate, just come and see me. You know, and I got talking to him, he was a nice, nice guy. Uh, uh, because he, he got involved in the craze, and he was one that got rid of the, the body with the Lambiano brothers. And he, I think he parked the body up in B, uh, in, uh, Bay, um, in Bermondsey. And uh, after that, uh, the other fellow got, got rid of it. And, uh, and that was it, but um, I made a mistake, so he was, he was going to give him the, uh, the knife. He didn't give him the knife, but it was supposed to be his knife from his house, but, you know, who knows. But um, Ronnie Bender, he didn't deserve to get what he got. What did he got, 25 years, 20 years? I can't remember now. I think it was 25 years he got. Um, I think he'd done about 18, 19 years of it. I'm not quite sure. Uh, listen, mate, he was a nice, nice guy. You know, I mean... I mean, I remember him talking to me about him uh, joining the SAS, you know. I mean, he joined the SAS. That's, uh, that shows what sort of nice guy this guy was. He was a very powerful, strong man. Um, he loved the gym. Uh, he loved. He was always in the gym with us. He wasn't strong. He wasn't a strong, big, powerful man. But he wasn't strong like uh, lifting big weights and all that, you know. He was strong. I mean, I, see, I, I still see him do three plates in the bench press. You know, and he was a good squatter. He was a good squatter, but he had a dodgy leg, you know. He had a bad leg, so that's why he didn't play a lot of football. Um, but he was always there. I mean, we, when we played rugby, we played some good teams out there. Uh, London Saracens, Wasps. Uh, well, we played loads of teams, you know what I mean? And one was always there. He was always there for the football as well. I mean, we had good football teams there. We had good rugby teams there. And he was always there. And, and, and Mickey Blackmore, and people like that, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, when I went into the cell uh, one day, you had, I've never really met these people at first, there was Alan Dixon, the Dixon brothers, big, strong, powerful people, uh, your Tibbses, Jim, the old man Jim, nice, nice man, mate, he was as big as an house, and what a gentleman, a proper, proper gentleman, you had young Jimmy Tibbs, I think Robert Tibbs was there at the time as well, uh, they was in the cell, uh, there was people that, I didn't, never really knew, you know what I mean? But the first time I really met them, uh, you know, it's a bit of a surprise uh, to meet these people after all the years that I've done in prison. And then, the, but the only person, the only person really, really didn't um, have it with that lot was uh, Mickey Green. Mickey Green was a loner. He uh, was a, with a guy called Tony Edlin. They was always together. But it's not really about all this lot, it's about Ronnie Bender. You know, I mean, Ronnie Bender, I liked him a lot, you know. And uh, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot. I mean, he taught me how to do this thing called astral projection. I mean, uh, I mean, I've read stories about him saying that he had ch chimes by his door. Listen, everybody in Chelmsford Prison had chimes by their door. It was something that Chelmsford Prison was a prison that you could get away with anything, anything at all. Besides, you know, as long as it's not not breaking the rules as such, yeah. Why shouldn't you live comfortable? Why have you got to live like a tramp? You know, why? Why aren't you doing enough, Bert? 
I mean, come on, yes, he had carpets. Yes, he had curtains. Yes, he had bedspreads. Yes, he had drinks in a cabinet. Yes, he had loads of tins and loads of tins of food. Yes, he had biscuits. Yes, he had cakes. Yes, he had drinks. Why not? Why not? He's doing 25 years or 20 years. Why not? Do you know what I mean? Why not? Leave him alone. Do you know what I mean? Going to court and all this, that and the other, making him out to be some sort of gangster. He wasn't, he, okay, because he, he, he was with the firm. He was with the craze. Uh, he was with, so what? So what? There was lots of firms about. There was lots of firms about. The Richardsons, the Wileys, the Evanses. There's loads of firms about, mate. There's loads of big, big, big firms about. Nice people. They don't make them out to be bad people. Because they've got them, them people really keep the streets clean. Them people was about in them days, they was proper people who kept the streets clean. They don't know these silly cunts running around now with big knives. They sorted it out a long time ago. That had been sorted. Don't worry about that, mate. That would be sorted. They wasn't bad people. They was good people, mate. Blood Ronnie Bender loved him to death, mate. I mean, come on. He was a power of mine. He was a mate. He came in my cell. Listen. I had a sofa in myself, a, a, a chair, a sofa chair. And I had a lot of swiper units in myself, carpets, curtains, bedspreads, a light that was all red and green and blue and purple, different colours, which used to go round and round and round. There's clever people in that prison who could do lots of things. When he bent used to sit there, do a little bit of painting now and again, but mostly right to his right, because in them days, you couldn't really get. It wouldn't have been if you get phone calls from 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 the uh, from the box, you know, from Jack Sads. And he, I mean, he he was one of one of Benner's pals, Jack Sads, the PO there. Nice, nice old boy, but very strict, yeah. But he would be give Ronnie Bender phone calls. Come on, mate, why not? Ronnie Bender was, uh, I think he was on the works. He was in the kitchen for a bit of time when I was there. But he's always coming in the kitchen, taking that meat for Jimmy Tibbet, <laughs> Jimmy Tibbs. <laughs> Jimmy, I love Jimmy Tibbs. Ronnie Malloy, the uh, the silver bullion guy. Ronnie Malloy was so funny, mate. He was like, he made himself out to be so mean, you know what I mean? He'd never give you nothing, but he was a nice, nice guy, old Ronnie Malloy. He got done with the silver bullion. Um, he was a diamond, <laughs> he's a gentleman. Me and Peter Lyons, Big Pete, used to go in there and uh, rob him of all his sugar and his tea, he'd go fucking nuts, you know what I mean? <laughs> he couldn't grass us up. He's a proper person, you know what I mean? And, uh, but I've got to say it, uh, Ronnie Bender, just uh, get rubbed down, quick rub down. Uh, they was a bit afraid of him, you know what I mean? Because he was. Um, but he'd walk out with a leg of lamb, Roast, roast, big leg of uh, roll of beef, pork chops. He'd walk out with so much gear, mate. Tea bags, coffee, everything. But it wasn't about just for him. It wasn't about just for him. He'd give everybody bits and pieces. He was a gentleman. And they make him out to be, what? Come on. That Melfi Stevens, that Judge Melfi Stevens, was a bad, bad judge. He was run by the government. The government wouldn't then put away the craze. So why did they put all that fucking lot away for so much per, per, uh, sentence? Come on. For, he didn't stab no one to death. He, all he done was drive the body and dump the body somewhere. For, okay, he's involved in it as such, yeah? But the craze... Listen, I heard the craze done some bad things, yeah? I heard the craze really could have got all that lot out of it, but they put them in it in a way. You know what I mean? So, you know, there's a big story about that. Did they? Didn't they? You know what I mean? But Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Bennett said they did. Uh, they said the wrong, uh, too much. They shouldn't have said it. We could, they could have walked, not walked, but got a lesser sentence, but the craze went the mid with them. And that was how it was. You know what I mean? The craze said things they shouldn't have said. And uh, that, that lot got a lot more burn than they should have got. You know what I mean? That's, listen, that's how it was, you know? The craze were the, were the firm, were the governors, and they wanted everybody to go down with them. You know, fair play, you know. Is it fair play? No, it fucking ain't fair play. You know what I mean? But Ronnie Ben had the right piss ache about it. I can understand, mate. You know, and he had this, I think she was Ty. Uh, Ty, the woman that he was with at that time. She was Ty. And, um, you know, and he was like, he used to ask her project, honestly. She was absolutely stunning. I was just here on a visit with Ronnie. Ronnie, Ronnie Bender was a good-looking guy, a good-looking guy, you know. I think he died 
when he was about 63, something like that. He'd done all that time in prison and come out and lived a little bit of his life and died. His brother, Ray Bender, was with, uh, uh, what, uh, what's his name? I forget his name, no, the, one of the boxing promoters, Alex Steen. He was with him and, uh, you know, and uh, Ray Bender, I, I met Ray Bender because I was when I was fighting, when I come out, they got hold of me, wanted me to do things, uh, boxing and that now, but I had my own, my own uh, trainer and all that and we didn't really get involved with him as such, yeah. But um, I like, you know, I mean, one, I wish I, I should imagine, I see one once play rugby, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't any good, he wasn't no good. He had to get, he had to get off the rugby, <laughs> the, he had to get off the green and the grass because uh, we had to kick him off at the end, he was no good, mate. He did try it. He, he, he had a dodgy leg, he said, you know what I mean, but he was funny. I mean, any man, any man that goes into the SAS, yeah, they've got to be some sort of man, you know what I mean? The SAS don't accept anybody that's shit, you know what I mean? You know, and then you've got to be some sort of person to get in the SAS, you know what I mean? But it's about Ronnie Bender. Um, him, Jimmy Tibbs, the old man, very close, very close. Uh, Jimmy Tibbs, young Jimmy, the fighter, good fighter, Jimmy Tibbs, mate. Good fighter, shame. Whatever happens, you know what I mean. He's a good. When he come out, he started to train Jimmy Tibbs, and uh, he trained some good fighters, mate. You know his son's doing the same thing, you know. But Jim, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic boxer, fantastic trainer. Hold my hands up to him. I'll see him at the at the weigh-in at uh, when Eubanks fought Gary Stretch. I was there, and uh, you know I was at the back. If you look there, you see me, and. Uh, I said, I like Jim. Jim is a nice guy. I ain't seen Jim for ages. And uh, when I walked in there and I see him, I went, all right, Jim. He went, hello, Ray. All right, mate. Oh, yeah. And we ain't, like, we ain't seen each other for years, you know what I mean? And he's bumped, cuddles. Nice, mate. It's nice to see see that. And, uh, you know, I was respected. I mean, I didn't, so I was a big, big guy there. Big, powerful guy. Um, trained all the time. I see good people behind me. Fraser was a couple of cells from a driving man. <laughs> <laughs> that time I put the two eyes on his pillars of greatest thing I ever did in my life, so funny. But it, he didn't find it funny, thank I don't suppose he did wake it up to your eyes in the pillar. <laughs> so funny, thank And, you know, I mean, Chogi, my mate Chogi Ludlow with uh, Ronnie Bender, he was a white of him. He was a white of him. He, he liked him. There was a guy upstairs called Lou Swallow. Lou Swallow. Lou Swallow, mate. What a nice geezer. And paint. Fucking hell, this geezer could paint, mate. I've never seen anybody faint, paint like this. I mean, unbelievable. Really, really good paint there. Faint, you look like, <laughs> I to, loose one of, like something out of, I don't know what he would be, but he, you know, Max Wall, he looked like that big head. He looked like he's like, you know, um, but nice geezer, nice geezer. Terry Millman, Terry Millman was there. he done a lot of paint. Terry Millman was the best painter, mate. Oh, fuck me. I see that painting he'd done in his cell. Of about a million faces on his painting, mate. It was unbelievable. It was a painting. A proper, proper painting. I forget where it was now. It was like a city or something, but it was all done of faces. And it's unbelievable. It must have been worth a fortune. And he he got done for that, uh, uh, um, the, the dome, when they tried to nick the diamond off the dome. I think he had a heart attack, died of heart attack. I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, but Terry Millman, gentleman, like Terry Millman, rest in peace to Terry Millman, I liked you a lot, mate, and there's some people in there, mate, some proper people, you know, and to get involved with them as a kid and go into Ronnie Bender's cell and meet them people that were proper people, mate, that were proper people, and as I say, Ronnie Bender taught me a lot, um, taught me how to control Himself. Well, he wasn't a violent man, mate. Wasn't a violent man. They made him out to be something he ain't. Even though he joined the SAS and all that, you know, but he still doesn't make him to be a violent, violent person. Okay, he used to drive the Greys around. He used to be a personal chauffeur, I think, for Ronnie Gray. I think it was Ronnie. He was his personal train, uh, personal chauffeur. So he's a chauffeur. He ain't someone who's going to walk around with big knives in his pocket and stabbing people. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. Uh, I've just done this podcast because of Ronnie Bender. Uh, I like Ronnie Bender a lot, and I'd like 
for people to realise he was a nice, nice guy, and uh, he was a good-looking guy, you know what I mean? And uh, he didn't deserve to what he got. He didn't deserve that, mate. You know what I mean? And, and, and I see, uh, I didn't actually see it, you know, but um, walks in the cell after it was done, when someone killed someone in, in when he'd been in the cell uh, with, a, with um, a big iron bar. Smash his face inside out, but the guy was waiting for this guy to come through the door and he got to come and stuck on the guy his, his arm with the bar and the bar fell on the floor and the guy reversed it and smashed it in a piece and killed him. You know, but I mean, them things happen in prison. You know, they happen him all the time. People are getting stabbed to death uh, with, 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 with uh, two brushes when they fire them, bump, bump, and there's loads of things that happen in there. To get out of prison in one piece, you've done it sort of right favour, mate, I'm telling you. It's hard to get in one piece. We've all been stabbed up. I've been stabbed up with pencils in my back. It's hard, mate, but we get out in one piece. Anyway, this is Ray Bang Bang Hill. Please like and subscribe. And remember, uh, Ronnie Bender, you know, Google him. Please Google him and you'll find out about him, mate. He's a proper gentleman. Nice, nice guy. Good looking guy. And I give my respects to him. Rest in peace, Johnny, uh, Ronnie Bender. Take care and have a nice day. Yeah, bye-bye.